taking a bold step by identifying with the government it has given a level playing ground to live and thrive in their endeavors, accounting that non-indigenous in the state represent over 1.2 million of the state population, asking them to keep championing the solution policies and agenda. Barista Abudo disclosed that the non-indigenous association has been issued a certificate to operate as an affiliate group of ASATU and urge them to champion peace, togetherness, and development of Anambra State. He urged them to be security conscious and participate in efforts to ensure a more secure state, which is paramount to the Soludo administration, highlighting the administration's efforts to provide a level playing ground for everyone. Be ready, I will always be ready and willing to make sure that we are equal and comfortable. Talking about women, capital development and creating relationship for all of us to enjoy. So just feel free and make sure that we maintain that synergy for better Anambra State and better communities in Anambra State. In an address of welcome, the national president of the Association of Non-Indigenous in Anambra State, Prince Chigo Zienweke, said the elders are leaders and title holders in their respective states, organizations, and are known by both government and security operatives. Hence, they can nip incidents of crime and criminality in the board, stating that their aims include establishing an association that will be governed by the rule of law, justice, equity, transparency, and brotherliness. To establish an association that will be governed under the rules of law, justice, equity, transparency, and good leadership. Two, to promote peaceful coexistence between non-indigenous and their host communities in other states. Speaking shortly after they were inaugurated, Chief Mike Nwato, on behalf of other members of the Elders Council, pleaded with Barista Abudo to help ask town unions to recognize them in their communities as partners in progress. In her remarks, the women leader of the association, Mrs. Rauta Audu, highlighted the women's wing efforts to the association so as to better the welfare of the non-indigenous in the state. Presentation of certificates by Barista Abudo to the Elders Council was the climax of the program in Oka Amaka Chibuzo Okoye, ABS News. The Anambra State Government says it has conducted a pre-impact assessment on flood-prone communities ahead of the 2024 flooding. The Anambra State Commissioner for Special Duties, Barrister Honorable Beverly Ipazo Ikemdiche, stated this during an interview with ABS in an office in Oka on the government's preparedness following the 2024 flood prediction. Correspondent Chibuzo Obdike filed in this report. Azun Kemdiche, who expressed happiness over the water level of the council areas, revealed that the present administration understands the topography of the area during the rainy season, which regularly cuts off the communities from each other, as roads being constructed in the area are designed to stand the test of time. She pointed out that the pre-impact assessment visit was regarding complaints received from residents of the flood-prone communities in the state over the late arrival of palliatives and accommodation and promised that the state government would ensure early arrival of intervention this year. The commissioner re-emphasized that even though Anambra is within the moderate flood risk areas, the ministry is working round the clock to ensure that the riverline areas of the state are prepared for the high risk of flood to avoid any emergencies. The former Anambra lawmaker pointed out that the ministry has engaged in an interactive section with stakeholders and residents in various councils in the river line to understand their challenges during flooding, devastating impact they witness the level of government intervention to cushion the effects of the flooding, which according to her, the ministry will review and make more recommendations to ensure solution-driven plans during and after the floods. She called on residents of the areas to always be alert and be ready to evacuate the areas if need be to ensure the protection of life and properties of the people. If you go out there now, you will not believe in San at all. They have fortified it in a way that water won't come like it used to come before. So we are hoping that it will not be a critical um, situation when flood comes to San because we are going to act fast. You know, once the, the rain, we've been watching the rain, we've been watching the flood, so far so good. 
we haven't seen a major problem. On the issue of flooding around some urban centers, the Special Duties Commissioner frowned at residents and developers who build on waterways, thereby causing heavy flood and leading to loss of property, calling for attitudinal change. If you build on waterway, you're looking for problem during flooding period. You know, in Igbo, they say, on your you know, so you don't go hurting yourself. And now you expect the government to come and uh, clean up your mess. In Oka, Chibuzo Bidiki, ABS News. It was a merriment galore at Alo in the Demili local council area when Igwe McAntony Okonkwo played fellow traditional rulers, top government functionaries, friends, and his subjects who came from different parts of the state and beyond as he celebrated his 10th year anniversary on the throne on the 24th of 2024 New Year Festival in the community. The event, which kicked off with an interdenominational church thanksgiving service, where the traditional ruler praised God for giving him success on the royal throne of the community and for giving the community a bountiful harvest. Correspondent Chibuzo Obidike covered the event and now reports. Speaking during the interdominational service, Reverend Father Emmanuel Obaja said that leadership is an opportunity to evangelize and replicate Christ-like lifestyle to all categories of people and subjects and commended Igwe Okonkwo for his dedication and commitment to the things of God. Later in a speech before the ceremonial cutting of the new year, he welcomed what thank God for the abundant harvest this year, prayed for bigger harvest in the future, and remarked on the importance of everyone involved in agriculture as a way to end hunger and starvation. He welcomed what with songs of praise expressed gratitude to God for giving him good health and another opportunity to celebrate another new year celebration, and revealed that prayers has kept him and his subjects through all these years. He also prayed for peace and immeasurable blessings upon our community, Anambra and Nigeria. As the chief of custodian of the land, it is my right and constitutionally to perform the Iliji Dewachi Festival. So I give thanks to God. I appreciate God. The chairman of Anambra Central's Traditional Rulers Council and Traditional Ruler of Iftedunu, Igwe Emeka Ilono, and the Traditional Ruler of Omaolo, Igwe Jewel Egwongu, acknowledged that the New Year Festival unites communities and is a great opportunity to motivate and encourage younger people to venture into farming to reduce the cost of food produce and other commodities in the market. <laughs> While improving the economy of the community, the state and the country in general, Mr. Amobi Ekweme was happy to celebrate with Igwe Kumpo, adding that the Alomona is a natural traditional ruler whose large heart connects across countries. Thus, the importance of paying homage to him and having his blessings. The managing director of Anambra Broadcasting Service, Sachido Obidiegu, and the president general of Building Materials International Market, Ogidi, Chief Jude. One for we are among other dignitaries who took turns to pay homage to Igwe Okonkwo and celebrate with the Alo community from Alo Chibuzo Bidike ABS News. Third birthday celebration, Chief Azubike Ezokwa Ide Umwawolo through his Ide Global Movement has paid the hospital bills of 17 patients at Chukwemeka Odumegu Juku University Teaching Hospital, Amako Oka, totaling 3.5 million naira. Correspondent Joseph Ebocha reported that after visiting male and female surgical wards, as well as the mother and child referral center of the hospital, where he handed over receipts to the beneficiaries, Chief Ekwazo also visited and donated food and other items to Divine Mercy Compassion Home, Amobia, to celebrate the day. In her remarks, the nurse in charge of the male and female surgical wards of the hospital, Ms. Luisa Ibekwe, described the gesture as a laudable and commendable one and appealed to other non-governmental organizations and foundations to emulate the global movement to look out for vulnerable people and extending helping hand to them. In their separate appreciations, some of the beneficiaries, including Mr. Ikenna Aniedo, 
from Achala, Mr. Chigozie Nwanebe from Amobia, Mrs. Neka Ndubisi from Oka, and Mrs. Mary Obara from Umuawolo, while wishing the benefactor a happy birthday. Also prayed God to continue increasing him in all his endeavors. <laughs> At Divine Mission Compassion Home, Amobia, the matron, Reverend Sister Shizorom Ugu, joined children at the center in thanking and wishing Chief Ekwazo a memorable birthday celebration. Thank you to God for the life he has given to them and for this uh, gift he has given to us too. God in heaven will help them and keep them alive to eat of the fruits of their womb. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Addressing journalists after the visit, Chief Ekwazo said the gesture was to also celebrate his first son, Prince Shimezie Azubike Ekwazo Jr., who shares the same birthday as him. Chief Ekwazo, represented by the coordinator of IDE Global Movement, Mr. Kasme Obiebolu, explained that as part of the foundation's efforts to help less privileged individuals in the society, IDE Global Movement is committed to helping vulnerable people in the society, especially unemployed youths, orphans, Muslim mothers, children, widows, as well as the sick. We are here to show them that they are part of the society, they are part of us. You know, irrespective of whatever happened, irrespective of the manner they came to the world, we want to, we are here to show them love and to also to encourage the sister, the reverend sister, by taking care of them. That with the help of uh, the world in the society and the help of some foundations in the society, they can achieve a better result in bringing these children uh, up to the level. God have destined them to be. Earlier in an ABS radio program to also mark the birthday celebration, Chief Ekwazo, who endorsed Governor Chukwu Masoludo for a second term in office, noted that the Akulon philosophy of the Anambra State Government is worth supporting, calling on Anambrarians to heed the call to speed up the development of the state and meaningfully engage the youths, thereby tackling insecurity. <laughs> Ah. The government has to be the one who has um, set up some roots. You know, it's a charity organization. Okay. Uh, just, um, he said that is the only way he can be able to give back to the charity. The birthday celebration climax with the cutting of the cake and the special prayer for the celebrants led by the traditional ruler of Omawolo, Igwe Jewel Egwong at his palace, Joseph Ebocha reporting for ABS News. But Operatives of the Nigerian police force has arrested no fewer than 30 and bad governments, protesters for waving Russian flags in Kano, Kaduna, Katsina, and Bauchi states. The first spokesperson, Muiwa Adejobi, said 873 other protesters have been arrested by the police, including a tailor identified as Amadou Bello, who was arrested with a large number of flags in Kano. This comes as President Bola Tinubu directed security agencies to crack down on those flying Russian flags in the country. General Christopher Musa, the Chief of Defense Staff, said while briefing State House correspondents after the National Security Council meeting, all the service chiefs, including Vice President Kashim Shetima, Nuhu Ribadu, National Security Advisor, and Kayode Ebetokun, Inspector General of Police, attended the meeting. And over to our foreign news. Belfast has experienced a second night of violence disorder at rioters through patrol bombs and missiles at police. At least one police vehicle was burned and several blazes lit in the Sandy Road and Dunga Road areas of South Belfast. It follows a similar night of chaos on Saturday when several hundred anti-immigrant protesters threw fireworks as they marched through the city. De Deputy Duty District Judge Liam Maxte in Belfast Magistrate Court refused bail for two men who had participated in the unrest, which saw a violent mob trash businesses and a set, and set a supermarket on fire. The police operation was accelerated as anti-racist protesters, anti-Islam and anti-asylum seekers rioters continued to clash. Belfast is one of several UK cities to see violence and chaos in its streets in recent days. Over to our sports news. The Minister of Sport Development, Senator John Eno, has disclosed that Nigeria's local and foreign-based athletes have received training grants and allowances. 
This, the minister said, was a testament to the ministry's concern for the welfare of the athletes, of the country's athletes. Eno tweeting as hashtag Uwan Eno noted on Tuesday via his ex.com handle that this will be the first time ever that the home based athletes representing the country will receive training grants. Remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page. Follow us at Anambra Broadcasting Service. Subscribe to our YouTube at youtube.com forward slash ABS Television Orca and on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. Before we go, a look at the main point again. Governor Chukuma Soludo has inaugurated ANSIEC board members. Anambra State Government has conducted pre-impact assessment on flood-prone communities. Nigeria military cracked down on protesters flying Russian flag. And on the foreign scene, we brought to you rioters have thrown petrol bombs and missiles at police in Belfast. To end the news, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Suludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the tax ahead. My name is Ajuri Chuku Okabwe. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed morning.